you can get this with seats that like come out and it's basically like a, a tailgating thing. So I guess if you want to watch your croquet match. The wheels off bring. I've seen not much of that, Ted. And there goes. Well, we've seen that before, Ted. Referee moving him up to up to the fall screen on the tree lawns. Yes. What's up, guys? Behind me is a Rolls Royce Cullinan. the sport utility vehicle from Rolls-Royce. You might not have seen one of these yet. They've only been out for a couple of years now. You're probably more familiar with the sedans like the Rolls-Royce Phantom or the Ghost or the Wraith, all the cars, but this is the first SUV. And the reason that Rolls-Royce decided to launch an SUV is because some of their competitors also decided to do that. So we have the Lamborghini Urus and the Bentley Bentayga. Those are mostly what's going to compete with this. Now, of course, there's other luxury SUVs on the market, but this is a whole nother class of luxury. There's really, really nice SUVs like BMW X7s and Mercedes-Benz GLSs and maybe the G-Wagon, but this is like 10 steps over what that is, and I'm gonna show you why. The first thing you'll notice about this thing is just the immense size of it. I don't know if it's easy to grasp in camera or not, but this thing is huge. It's on 22 inch wheels and they don't look big. That's how you know it's enormous. The front end when you're sitting in it looks like a runway. It's really, really cool. But on these wheels, you'll notice the signature Rolls Royce center cap. And what's special about these is they don't move. As you're driving down the road, they don't spin with the wheel. They sit still and you can always see that RR prominently displayed, which is really cool. So around the front of the car, you've got this massive Rolls Royce grill. This is their signature, everybody knows it, as well as the Spirit of Ecstasy emblem. And this goes down inside of the grill, just like all of the other Rolls Royces. Really cool to watch. We'll have to make sure we do that for you. The headlights are now laser headlights. This is the second car we've had in here that we've noticed there's a laser warning sticker on there. So that's interesting. I don't really know what the, the visible difference is driving at night with a laser headlight versus a normal headlight. The difference is the laser is super directional. And because there's no mirrors or other facets to split the light, it goes in one direction, straight ahead. One thing that I noticed on this car versus pretty much everything else we ever work on is these exterior metal pieces most of the time are like a chrome plated plastic or sometimes they're real metal, but it's chrome. These are polished aluminum. So the only other car that I remember working on uh, that I know for sure had that was the Spiker C8. Downfall of that is it, it does oxidize and sort of scratch pretty easily, but that is more of like a high end thing. For whatever reason, the real metal comes on expensive cars. So the reason I said this thing is in a class of its own with the Lamborghini Urus and the Bentley Bentega is a lot of it has to do with the price. This thing starts at $340,000. So it is about as elite as it gets for an SUV. So the first question I had when I heard about the Rolls Royce Cullinan is what the heck is a Cullinan? Most people have asked pretty much that same question in the shop here. So I did some research. The Cullinan is the name that was given to the largest gem quality diamond ever mined. It was mined, I guess, in Africa in the Cullinan mines or in an area called Cullinan in 1905. It was 3,100 carats. And in today's society, it's estimated to be worth $2 billion for a rock. So that was pretty cool. Uh, they ended up trying to sell the diamond in England. They couldn't do that successfully. It didn't sell for like two years. And then it was given as a gift to King Edward VII. So, so I thought that was interesting. And that's what Rolls-Royce decided to name their elite SUV. So under the hood, and it's dressed up and fancy, but it's a V12 twin turbo making 563 horsepower. It's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. That same exact transmission can be found in the BMW 7 series and some other luxury German cars. So they sort of borrowed that technology, uh, but apparently it must be a good transmission if they're using them in all of those cars. The top speed of this thing is high for an SUV. It's 155 miles per hour. But when I read that, I thought that's high, but doesn't seem quite as high as I'd expect from something this extravagant. So I, I looked up what the Lamborghini Urus and the Bentley Bentayga are. And surprisingly, both of those go 190. So I don't know if 
this was just maybe aerodynamically limited because it is shaped like a huge brick basically or what but this is 155 so in that group of crazy suvs it is the lowest top speed even the mercedes-benz gls 63 will go 174 so not that you're going to be doing that on the road very frequently really who cares about the top speed it's just an interesting thing to know this one is the slowest of all of those the suspension setup on this thing is pretty wild. It's a self-leveling air suspension, which believe it or not, when I was pulling it off of the lift behind John here, you could tell that it wasn't like a normal car, that the back end was doing things. It almost didn't feel like you were coming off of any type of elevation. I mean, you're only talking like four inches or so, but any other car that we pull off of the lift, you can tell that you're coming off of the lift. This thing, I almost couldn't tell when I was on and when I was off the lift. So that was interesting. One thing in my research that I found is that this has a camera system called the Flag Bearer from Rolls-Royce, which I thought was a cool name. Basically, it scans the road ahead of you and adjusts your suspension preemptively. So before you hit the bump, the car knows that you're going to hit the bump and has already made a minute adjustment to make sure that the bump allows for as smooth of a ride as possible. So I've never read anything about that on another car. If there are any cars out there like that, leave it in the comments. Let me know which it is because I thought that was one of the coolest features of this thing. And of course, that is what gives the Rolls Royce its characteristic. They called it the magic carpet ride. So that's what these are known for, ride quality and luxury, and that helps achieve that. In addition to being enormous, this thing is insanely heavy. It weighs three tons. It's all wheel drive, of course, to get you going quickly off the line, goes good in the snow, all that fun stuff. And it has four wheel steering. So it's a lot more maneuverable in tight spaces, parking lots and that kind of thing for something that's this size. So enough about the outside. Rolls Royce is known for its luxury. And that is where this thing shines. So we've got a red leather interior with black leather accents, white stitching on the dashboard, black wheel. You've got metal trim accents, wood grain all over the place. That wood grain's a nice flat finish. I like that a lot. And of course, coach doors. Or if you're a real car person, suicide doors. But either way, this is cool. It's not a Rolls Royce if you don't have the Rolls Royce umbrella. The dashboard in this thing is fully digital. It'll light up and sort of look like an analog gauge. There's actually a lot of complaints online I saw about that, that people like the analog feel in a car like this more than the digital one. So I thought that was interesting uh, because mostly everything is going to digital now. So I like it. When you're in the car, the center console and everything just feels right. I don't know how to describe it. Everything's shiny. Everything feels expensive. It, it feels like it should. This steering wheel is pretty much the same on every Rolls Royce I've ever been in, even like a 10, 12, 15 year old Rolls Royces, with the exception of maybe some extra buttons. Everything else is pretty much identical. So they've kept that the same through the years. This shifter is interesting. It initially looks like a Mercedes-Benz shifter where you just push it up or down, but you actually have to sort of move this almost like a truck shifter, and then it bounces back to where it goes. So just something that uh, getting in and out of cars every day, I thought that was a, a unique feature. Also, the push to start is on the left. So more like a Porsche 911 when you need to start it. You're looking over here, you're looking on the center console. It's on the left. One of the other features of this car is the lambskin, lamb's wool, I'm sorry, floor mats. So not all of the carpet is that plush, although it's close, but those are like super, super soft. I like it. That was a, I think like a $1,700 option. And it's not really a Rolls Royce if you don't order it with the Starlight headliner. So check this out. Inside you've got, I believe 1,300 individual stars here. This is a $7,000 upgrade from Rolls Royce, but like I said, sort of a necessity if you're buying this thing. So one of the options in the back seat, this one doesn't have it, but you can apparently get a center console here that is a cooler. And it also comes with Rolls Royce champagne flutes and a decanter. So that's kind of cool. And there's one more in the trunk that this one doesn't have either, but I'm sure we can find a picture and show it to you. You can get this with seats that like come out and it's basically like a, a tailgating thing. So I guess if you want to watch your croquet match, something i don't know why i don't think anybody's taking this to the steeler game to tailgate but maybe he will uh be really awesome if he does so yeah that's um an option that you can get in this as well so the reason that the cullinan is here is we did a full expel paint protection film wrap so every inch of this car is protected with expel 
every inch of painted surface, I should say. So everything that you see that's white. This one holds the record for the biggest piece of film that we've ever installed from the front of the pillar here, the whole way back to the back is one piece of paint protection film. It's 150 inches long, so that is huge. Biggest one we've ever done. Then we ceramic coated the car with Expel Fusion Plus. That will help it stay cleaner longer, easier to wash and resist staining and UV rays and all that kind of stuff. We also ceramic coated the wheels for those same reasons. On this one, we didn't get a chance to tint the windows. It showed up tinted. The tint job was of good quality, so we just left it alone. All right, my favorite feature of the entire car. I've never seen this in another car. When you get this awesome of an SUV, you don't have to close your own door. That's stupid. Guys, let us know what you think of the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. If you enjoy these videos showing you some of the cool cars that come into the shop, make sure you subscribe to the channel, comment, let us know what your favorite car is that we've had in here. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next car.